mansion like ladies and gents when I mention my name at the door. And I hope you'll pardon me, see by my card I am finding a world we may explore. You're in the dream I have drawn. You're like the wings for my song. I get a lift with your gift to no right from the wrong. Really strong. Our imagination will find this occasion to go where we know we belong. It was Harold's bedtime. But as Harold tried to go to sleep, he heard a strange fluttering sound. It was a ladybug. A beautiful ladybug with shiny red wings and round black spots. Harold wanted to say hello, but he wasn't sure how to shake hands with something so tiny. He didn't blame the ladybug for flying away. Maybe she was scared because he was so much bigger than she was. Harold started to wonder what it would be like to be as small as a ladybug. So, he grabbed his purple crayon. Harold remembered that ladybugs can often be found in gardens. So he scattered some seeds and made sure to give them plenty of water. Harold's garden grew, and grew, and grew some more, until it was so big, Harold actually felt as tiny as a bug. Harold's garden was ever so lovely, and now that he was so tiny, he could see everything close up. Suddenly, 
found he could go no further. The lily pond seemed as big as an ocean. Harold wasn't expecting to bump into anyone else on the pond. Harold felt small and a little scared. Now he knew how the ladybug had felt when she met someone so much bigger than she was. Since the frog was busy eating lunch, Harold figured this would be the perfect time to slip away. Just in case the frog was still hungry, Harold drew him a tasty gumdrop. Harold felt safer on land, so with the help of his crayon, he quickly made sure. As Harold continued on, he met another ladybug. Now that he was the ladybug's size, Harold could say a proper hello. The ladybug invited Harold to join her for a sip of dew. Although he wanted to join her, Harold had been taught, it's not polite to slurp. Ladybug was delighted with the tea set. Refreshed, she suggested they play a game. Suddenly, Harold remembered how big the garden seemed and how small he was. How would he ever find the ladybug again? Harold was beginning to lose hope until Harold spotted his new friend, but she appeared to be in trouble.
no time at all, a fire engine arrived. Even the fire engine's ladder wasn't tall enough. Harold had to find another way to reach the ladybug. Harold finally reached the ladybug, but she was hopelessly tangled. He'd done it! <gasps> Harold and the ladybug were safe. The ladybug was so impressed with Harold's cleverness, she invited him home to meet her family. The ladybug's family was bigger than Harold had expected. Harold was seeing Spot. He found an ant. The ant was looking for food to bring to his queen. Luckily, Harold wasn't food. But Harold offered to help the ant find some. Harold knew a perfect place to look for food. Kitchens look much bigger when you're as small as an ant, Harold thought. And the ant thought sugar was the perfect gift to bring to his queen but he was too small to pry off the lid. It turned out that what was in the jar wasn't sugar at all, but salt. The ant's queen did not care for salt. Bananas were sweeter. But 
much too big for the ant to carry all by himself. The cookie had broken into a thousand crumbs. Anyone just the right size for an ant to carry. Harold couldn't climb down the counter like an ant. Harold was looking forward to meeting the queen. So he put a chocolate chip on his shoulder and followed. I'm so tired. How long can this go on? Something tells me we're almost there. Oh, what a thrill. It's all downhill. You're such a dear Once we're up and over the top Why should we stop to book to pop Right here That's why we won't let it all drop Give me a prop up from the rear load was getting very heavy. He hoped the anthill wasn't too much farther. Harold was amazed to be inside an anthill. Being small certainly was taking him places he'd never been before. Queen thanked him royally for his tasty gift. Harold took the opportunity to ask the Queen why she didn't wear a crown. The Queen was so delighted, she made Harold her king. It was time for the royal feast to begin. The queen offered to share her food with Harold. But he remembered, you're not supposed to eat anything if it's been dropped on the floor. While Harold had enjoyed his time being small, he was feeling a wee bit uncomfortable. He was ready to go home and return to his normal size. Harold was glad to be above ground and seeing his old friend the moon reminded him just how tired he was. But he was still tiny. 
Harold drew his bedroom window the way it always looked when he was his normal size. Which meant he was just the right size to fit into his own cozy bed. And just the right size to snuggle lilac. Harold dropped off to sleep and his purple crayon dropped to the floor.